Hello, I'm Steve Hansen. I'm a Seattle-based food and beverage photographer, and today we are going to talk about beverages, everything related to caustics, refraction, reflections, how to make things look delicious, and we're going to use a lot of different unique techniques as far as lighting and gels and different colorations on the set. So join us and we'll go further into detail. All right, so here we are on set. I have my camera, which I will let you know off the bat is a medium format. It's the smaller sensor size, so it's it's a little bit more comparable to 35 mil and some other sensors. But I will kind of like try and give a quick, you know, description of what how I'm shooting and what settings I'm using um, as kind of a base to go on. But what I'm really going to dive into today is how to get these really beautiful looking reflections and caustics that you've seen a lot of images as of late. And one of the ways to get these really cool reflections is to use a small light source. Uh, often you'll see people just shoot directly into sunlight, which you can do, but you lack a little bit of control in that process. So what you want to do is have your key light be as small of a light source as possible, shining probably at about a little bit shallower than a three quarter angle going through the glass. Now this is all just, you know, this is all based on your creativity, but as a starting point, I like to dial in a light whether it's a bare bulb light or a light with a projection attachment like this that really gets in there, creates a really small, almost pinpoint light, and then you'll start to get, you'll start to see some soft caustics coming out here. And the further I move the light back, the sharper the caustics become. And I'll kind of show you that as I progress here, but you'll start to get a little bit more detail as you, even that little distance that I did there, probably about six inches gives you some sharp looking details in the reflections, which is kind of what we're going for. We're doing, we're doing fairly creative lighting today, so I'm gonna get a nice white balance reading on the card, but we're gonna divert immediately from that. We're gonna get super creative with the way we're shooting. So my base settings, I'm at 6.4 on this, I'm at 3.5 on this strobe. It's kind of a two to one ratio, give or take, but I really dial it in by feel. I'll kind of get my key light to make sure that my highlights aren't overexposed. So we have a, a base set dialed in here. I'm liking where the key light is. I'm gonna raise it just a few notches here to 6.7, just to get a little bit more light on the key. And I'm gonna bring in some cinefoil, which is an incredibly useful tool for photographers, just to kind of block out light in a very malleable way where I can, where I can push this down. It's not like a card where it's just defined. I can kind of mush it down. Um, let's turn on the modeling light here, just to make sure what I, what I don't want it's a lot of this light hitting the surface of the of the board here. So that that's just with the modeling light on, you can literally see where that kind of goes away a little bit. Because what we want is to be able to see the reflect, refractions and caustics come through in kind of a dark environment. There is a blue flexi gel on this light just to kind of add a little bit of ambience and a little bit of colder light coming through the background just to make the uh, the beverage pop a little bit. And I believe this is a neutral daylight balance going on the key light here. Now what I'd like to talk about is what I look for in glassware because of the glassware and what goes into the glass is going to define how the refractions and the reflections look. Now there's different types of glasses. There's glasses that are super high end, that are crystal, some are really thin. The thin ones give you a much easier time as far as dispersion. Dispersion is kind of when you know the light bounces within the glass and kind of gives you that rainbow pearlescent look that you're Sometimes trying to avoid, sometimes I, I kind of like it a little bit. I like that. But if you're looking for a very clean, professional, heroic hero shot, those are something you kind of want to avoid. But the double-edged sword is, you know, glasses that have a lot of imperfections that are a little bit thicker along these lines that may not be of higher quality will sometimes give you much better acoustics, which are the reflections, you know, that you see on the actual table going through the glass. So if you have stuff, I love glasses that have stuff like on the bottom as it goes downward. So you'll start off really thick and a nice clean look, and then you'll have some things that'll break up the light and you know imperfections in the glass, especially if it has a little bit of color to it, that color will translate through the glass. So if you see, when I switch this out and turn on the modeling light here, if you get in close, you'll see the pattern fairly distinctly coming through the glass here. So there'll be a little bit of a, you'll see, you know, anytime the light hits, it'll spread 
and create a pattern on the surface of the of the table and you can account for that what i do is is to shoot this first and have this image as the caustic shot so I'll, I'll arrange, you know, if, if I know where the glass is going to be and what I do on my set is I have a laser that I have on the roof here or on the ceiling and I'll be able to mark the exact spot where that glass goes. So I won't have anything on the table that moves. It'll be hundred percent automatic every time. So then I can just switch out glasses and, and be on the focal plane and try, you know, different glasses out. But the ice is also going to have a major impact on how these caustics look. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if you look here on the set, next to this glass here it's not even fully in the light but you can still see it just in the you know the daylight that's coming through the studio there's reflective caustics and refractive caustics so the reflective caustics are the ones that hit the glass and then come back towards camera a little bit they're not the caustics that go through and then cast you know a reflection on the other side this is going to be a you know a really cool pattern because this will give you reflective caustics in the front and reflect refractive caustics in the back and this one scatters light everywhere. It's a super amazing glass. So it's cool to, you know, kind of go through a glass shop and check a bunch of different ones out, antiques or brand, you know, brand new ones. Kind of take a flashlight with you and see how they react because this is, you know, a big part of the cocktail shots I do involve really what the glass projects onto the set. So it is fun to kind of have an array of glassware that just does different things for you. So now we're gonna do the official glass build kind of as I would approach it in a commercial project. Um, for, for a lot of commercial projects, the glassware is gonna be chosen for you. So it's even more important to kind of test out in your own time how everything from a beer glass to a cocktail glass work in, in different, especially hard lights. You know, a strip box off to camera left is gonna be fairly predictable. Now a bare bulb with, you know, especially if you're outdoors and combining strobe with natural light and a, a variety of factors, um, it's important to be able to control it as, as the light source gets smaller and it gets more challenging to do so. So often what I'll do is if, if a client is like, we want a really nice, cool, you know, lifestyle shot with really cool reflections hitting everywhere. I will first take a shot of the reflections and as I want them to be before I fill the glass, because the second I feel the glass, the liquid is going to act as its own softbox of sorts, depending on what liquid is in there. I mean, there's tons of variables involved. So today I'm just gonna be doing a basic um, cocktail mix I have here. It's, it's fairly translucent, so we'll let a little bit of light through. So let's, let's fill the glass. I'll show you, you know, I'll take this shot. My settings right now, I'm at F13. So on a traditional camera, I'd probably be around F9, F11. Um, those of you who follow me know I'm not super technically minded. I kind of just do it, you know, in a very artistic fashion. But I'm assuming that'll kind of get you, you know, F9, a little bit of depth of field. Um, but it's really up to you how you want to shoot this. Um, so let's start with this shot here. We have blue light coming back from the back, a, a projected light coming from the front, very directional. And so here we have, we have ref reflective caustics on the right, refractive caustics on the left, and light literally just exploding all over the ice cubes. I'm sure some of these are getting close to being overexposed. But that will go away once I fill it. So I'm not worried about that yet. So this shot, when I'm going into post-production, um, I don't know that there's any shot I've ever done that didn't require multiple layers. So I shot, I'm shooting this only for the re reflections, that's it. Um, and I'm liking where, I'm, where we're at because we're getting a little bit of, you know, a little bit of a beam of blue on, from camera left. It kind of looks like a nice bar top scene that's nice and cool around the edges. Your eyes going directly towards the beverage. And I'm gonna start to fill. So. I won't go too deep into actual beverage styling, which is a whole different thing. But to control splashes, I'm putting a, um, a funnel here just to protect the ice. Now, I'm probably gonna fill almost where you can see the uh, top of the two cubes there. And a trick, I used sparkling water just to kind of show everybody how I control. If you do get bubbles, if it is supposed to be a completely still liquid, and you do have some um, bubbles that are really causing problems. A really fun way is to just kind of go through and use an actual feather. And that, if you go along the grass like that, it'll literally eliminate any bubbles that are sticking to the sides for a while. You'll have to go back and get after it again. But if you are you know, getting into trouble and you can reach down in here with a feather, a feather is amazing for that. Um, so we, have, we still have some reflective caustics as you can see on set. Let's take a shot. So we have 
a base shot here to start with. I'm I'm liking the reflective caustics, the gradient I have going on in the cocktail. The fill level is pretty good. What you're noticing is there's no caustics anymore. Like the the unless you have a, a, a direct genuine sunlight going through there, it's going to be really hard. That's why I took that initial shot. That way I can go and blend this back in in Photoshop with ease. And it'll still look believable because people do expect that some light would go through the cocktail. But yeah, I like where it's at. I think the only thing I would change is the um, placement of the ice. Now ice placement's a big deal. I'm gonna turn on the modeling light so we can see what we're doing. And then I can kind of look. I'm not too worried about the backlight because it's not punching through too much to where it's affecting. But we, Essentially with ice, you're just going to juggle it until it looks really good. And you do want to be looking at camera angle to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want, the angle you want. And then we'll take a shot. And now I like, I like this ice cube up front. I like where this one's in the back. There's a nice layered thing going on here. What I'd like to do is just add a quick garnish and make that the shot. So now we're gonna shoot the, the final cocktail. We're gonna kind of finesse it a little bit, see what we can do as far as angles. One of the things I'm noticing on the shot is that the when you're using very honed in lights, very directional lights, parts of these can get ignored a little bit. I'm also gonna move the citrus in the back to be a little bit more distinct from the time. Let's take another shot here. And I'm also going to bring this top barn door, which is actually the bottom of the projection, so it's opposite. I'm going to push that down a little bit to control the light going into the base of the glass because that's just getting a little bit too bright for me. And that's one of the nice things about having this level of control. As you'll see in the next shot, it's, it's, it's super dialed down. Now, what I'm noticing here is that, you know, my, my eye is going where I want it to go, but we're missing that, that front reflective caustic again. So we do want it. We're going to have to bring that back in in Photoshop. What I really wanted to get in those shots was just kind of a, an edge light on the top of the orange, just a little bit of exposure I could blend in up there. But I'm liking overall liking where I'm at. I'm going to do a quick spritz. Sometimes I will protect the top of this glass just to keep it from getting too messy. But being that I'm bringing this into Photoshop as layers, I'm not too concerned about it. So I'm just gonna give it a little spritz, kind of pointing upwards a little bit. You can actually see the laser in there, it's kind of cool. And just take a shot. So it just adds that little hint of coldness. I'm only gonna use the lower half where the actual liquid is actually connecting with the glass. That's the only portion I'm gonna add the, um, the droplets to. So I have my layers and I have every component I need to make a, a final shot. So I'll put that together for you so you can take a look. Okay, so we have our final shot, and I just want to recap this process we went through to get to this point. The important thing is just to get the reflections in the environment looking exactly how you want it, then proceed to fill the glass, wait on the condensation until the very end, because that definitely backs you into a corner as far as Photoshop is concerned. So I do encourage you to kind of go out, experiment, have fun with it, because that's really a place to explore new creative ideas. You know, really just the way light bounces through refractive objects is a fascinating subject and one that I'm continuing to learn to this day. So go out and have fun with it and enjoy.